not put ourselves behind the eight ball like that. John and Zach Berman. Hey, Carson. On, on the fourth and four play uh, that turned into the interception, it looked like you and Dallas weren't on the same page. Can you kind of take us through what happened there? Yeah, I mean, you you hit it on the head. You know, we, we just weren't on the same page. And, you know, that's on me. Uh, I got to make sure we're, we're squared away. We're on the same page. And, um, you know, he had a big game. He had a big game, and, and we just missed a couple. But, um, you know, in that situation, th that matchup, you know, I thought everything was good. He's our guy. And, you know, him and I just – we got to make sure we're on the same page for that. Zach and the Martin. Hey, Carson, how does it affect you, affect the offense, and affect Jalen when he's coming on the field mid-drive, you're coming off? Yeah, I mean, listen, when we're stagnant like that as an offense, you know, I'm all ears. You know, whatever coach is, is confident in, uh, however we can, you know, get some momentum or, or, you know, pick up a first down in that case early in the game. And so, um, obviously, it's a tricky thing to navigate. But I think, you know, if, if it's going to provide us the spark that we need, um, you know, hopefully going forward it, it can in those situations. But, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, we just didn't do enough all around tonight. Martin and Jeff McLean. Hey Carson, there's kind of been a lot of talk and speculation, you know, about you possibly getting benched or something like that. I mean, does that weigh on you at all? Do you think about that at all? Uh, and did that occur like during the game? Any of that come up? Yeah, I mean, I said it last week. You know, this is what you sign up for. You know, as a quarterback, um, ever since you're a kid, you know, you're you're prepared for for any of those. Nothing's ever guaranteed. And so for me, I, I don't think about that though. I just try and go out and be the best player I can be in practice, prepare my tail off compete my tail off and um, you know hopefully we can get this thing turned around man it's tough and I get it to, to Brian's point that O-line is is really problematic six sacks in the inception Monday Wentz has 65 combined sacks and turnovers this season 17 more than any other quarterback his Monday night counterpart Russell Wilson second with 48 but to the point we're making with Lewis you're in it but are you in it well I mean that's what we've got in the NFC East. It's just astounding. Thanks, thanks to the tiebreaker, your current division leader, G-Man. And they're likely going to have to trot out Colt McCoy as their starting quarterback on Sunday because of the uh, injury to Jones and the hamstring. Four more brutal road games awaiting these teams. Beats Philadelphia in large part because DK Metcalf did what he often does at a big night. You see Arias Slay and the completion percentage as the nearest defender is significantly higher than league average. Here you see Russell eyeballs the middle of the field and realizes I got my guy going deep and where Russell's as good as anyone throwing the deep ball. Slay, hard to put the blame on him there. They would score later on the drive. Later in the quarter, Wilson so dangerous Rolling out, finds DK, leaping over Slay out of bounds. Had 118 receiving yards in the first half. Second time this season in triple figures by the half. Third quarter. Again, Wilson loading up to 14. Metcalf shaking up a bit on the play, but would return later. And the fourth. Like, this is a completion with him in, as the nearest defender, but like, whoa. That's his fault? <laughs> Come on. What are you going to do? That is nothing. Metcalf, 10 grabs, 177 yards. 7-141 with Slay drawing that short straw and having to try to contain that dude right there. Look at the NFC playoff picture. Fascinating to see what the Saints are doing. Quarterback hasn't thrown a touchdown since he was at BYU like 15 years ago. Doesn't matter. There's Seattle currently eight and three. Green Bay there as well. You get back into a complicated situation if the Saints were to lose again about a three-way tiebreaker and all the rest of that. Meanwhile, who leads the NFC at the moment? Uh, that's the G-Men. A little more on Metcalf now. Who we got? Pete Carroll. All right, 177 yards tonight. Metcalf, the new NFL leader in receiving yards with 1,000 and 39 he's also nearing 2000 in his career with five games left in the season less than 100 yards shot joey galloway for the most yards through two seasons seahawks history 
Ryan Clark joins us as he does every Monday. And, and Ryan, let's turn it from the offense of the Seahawks to the defense and what they were able to do to Wentz. They pressured him on 18 of 53 dropbacks. He was off target on 10 of 42 attempts. So, I mean, look, we're in a blame credit society. We like to give blame more than we like to give credit. If we're gonna, if we're gonna give one or the other tonight, I mean, where do you mean? Mm -hmm. I want to give credit to the Seattle Seahawks because this Good. defense was talked about as the reason why they wouldn't be able to win a championship. Last two weeks, they've been amazing. Here, you're going to see show middle of the field safety with a twist up front, and they roll to too deep. When they roll to too deep, they fuse Carson Wentz, and now that allows the pressure to get to him, and that's a sack. Also, now we're going to see them switch up. They're going to show that single high safety again. Instead of rolling to too high, they play man to man. There's a tackle stunt up front, and and now Carson Wentz has to hold the ball because there's no one open. They're still working with four-man rushes, but getting to the quarterback. And on the final one, they have a fire zone where you drop out the deep tackle, bring your best rusher, Jamal Adams, off the edge. There's a screen set up by the, by the Philadelphia Eagles that he's unlocked on the outside. Just too fast, just too athletic, and he gets to Carson Wentz. This defense has started picking up. You saw them that you saw them curtail what Kyler Murray could do on the ground a couple of weeks ago, and now you see after the Philadelphia Eagles, this team's getting better. This defense is playing better. And when you watch the complimentary football of the Seattle Seahawks, they're not playing Russell Yolo ball anymore. They're playing championship football. And that's how this team can go far in the playoffs. All right, we have some more conversation come a little bit later on. And I'll just paraphrase what Ryan and I had a conversation off air for Philadelphia fans who say, give us Hurts. You don't want Hurts because he'd get hurt. Get behind this old line. That wouldn't be any good. <laughs> Get hurt. <laughs> well, you don't want Andre Diggs. Later, he would complete a pass. That was of great interest to many of you. And as a result, it's a six-point road win. Six-point. Let Russ hook movement in full effect. He eclipses 3,000 yards. Monday with five games to spare. He's now reached that mark in all nine of his seasons, breaking a tie with Cam Newton for the second longest streak. To begin a career in National Football League history, Peyton Manning did so in each of his first 13 seasons. Time now for our T-Mobile post-game coverage. Lisa Salters with Russell Wilson. Russell, another primetime game, another win for you. You were winning as quarterback in primetime in league history. Just what's your secret under the lights? Oh, man. Um, I think just staying poised. I think uh, just believing and, and uh, always being prepared. I believe in being prepared. Um, I believe our football team was prepared. Uh, we're playing championship football. We got through uh, some tough times. We also do a great job all season. Um, you know, our defense really stepped up uh, the past few games. It looked unbelievable. Carlos Dunlap's a big pickup for us. Jamal Adams has been unbelievable. Diggs, Bobby Wagner's as good as it gets. I don't know if there's been ever a better linebacker. There's been some good ones, and uh, that's a big comment. But uh, yeah, I'm just grateful for our guys. DK Metcalf made some great plays. He got a lot of catches. Tyler's special. Um, guys ran the ball really well. We had that holding call. We could have been another touchdown. We had a couple of plays that could have been there too as well to really break the game open. But uh, we got battling. We, we did it together. And that's what uh, that's what championship teams do. And so I just I just love playing. I, I love being prepared. I love I love winning. And I love the process more than the, than the end result. Let's talk about this. All right, we welcome in Lewis Riddick and Brian Greasy. And uh, it's a workmanlike game from Seattle. Like, I guess DK catch the one guy that just jumps off the screen, had 177 yards, which until the very end was more than everybody else in the field combined. And, and Lewis, I'll just start with you as a guy who used to make his living trying to slow guys like that down. When you look at him, what are you seeing? <laughs> I'm seeing a problem. And I think there is a saw a problem tonight. Dude, when you have that kind of size, speed, strength, rapport with your quarterback, it's tough to defend somebody, especially when you're one one all night long, like Darius Slay was tonight for the most part, because that's how Jim Schwartz likes to call the game. And Darius Slay's paid a lot of money, and they expect him to be able to match up against guys like this and, and be able to control them to some degree and not have them go off on you. You saw Jalen Ramsey do it, so he expected Darius Slay to have a little bit better of a of an outing than he did tonight. But for DK Metcalf and for the Seattle Seahawks fan and that fans in that organization, they got to sell something between him and Russell Wilson that's gonna be here to stay. Speaking of problems, Brian, I, I didn't want to start the conversation.